Welcome back. It is finally boat season and I couldn't be more excited. Today's video, I have a lot of people waiting for. Um, I've been sharing some stuff on my Instagram story about my live scope setup for the year and I've had a lot of questions of people asking for the full video. So we're finally getting it done today. I'm gonna run through my full setup on my live scope shuttle. If you remember, if you've been following my channel for a while, I actually did a live scope boat setup video last year and there was a few concerns that I had, a few things that I didn't really like, a few of the cons. And I actually found some solutions to those and have changed my setup just a little bit. So I'm really excited to share that with you and we're gonna dive right in. First off, a couple of the cons that I had in my last setup was one, the pole wasn't sturdy enough. It was just on the ram mount and it kept moving back and forth when I would drive even more than like a mile an hour. So um, that was one of the cons. And the other con is that I was kind of stuck right to my console. So those were a couple of the cons that I talked about in the last video. And even just with talking with some of you guys, you've kind of shared some of the same issues. So I'm excited to share some of the solutions that I found and kind of how I have it rigged up. First thing I do want to say is that I cannot answer for you exactly what is going to be the best solution for your specific situation because everybody has a different fishing style and everybody has different needs but what I can tell you is that this kind of setup right here is easily the most versatile setup that I have found for running one live scope and first I kind of want to talk through some of the most popular um, ways to set up your live scope on your boat and kind of show you some of the pros and cons kind of like I did in the last video um, but I just want to revisit them so that way you know why I'm doing certain things the way that I'm doing them the first one, which is probably one of the most popular, uh, is setting it up on your trolling motor. So you have your screen up on your bow and you have your live scope attached to your trolling motor. And some of the main cons to this one are being able to easily scan without taking your hands, without using your hands. So you can scan with your foot on your trolling motor. You can cast any direction. You have the bow of your boat. You're not spooking fish. So it's very, very fishable. If you are fishing by yourself, if you're fishing tournaments, if you are pretty much primarily fishing by yourself and you're not doing a lot of scouting, you know where you're gonna go, that is great because you can get up there, you can fish and you can just scan and cast. But if you're one fishing with more than one person, not everybody's gonna be able to see where these fish are at. But two, I do a ton of scouting. So I'm driving around, I'm not gonna drop a line in the water until I see fish. So if I have it on my trolling motor, I'm gonna have to drop my trolling motor every time I get to a new spot and wanna scan for fish. Another big con to having it up front on your trolling motor is obviously when you are spot locked. When you're spot locked, your trolling motor is moving, especially in some wind, it's constantly moving, so you might lose where the fish are. Those are some of the pros and cons of the trolling motor. Uh, one of my buddies, his name is Bob, he has it on his trolling motor and I actually do really like it when I've got to fish with him or it's just me and him or I'm up there by myself when we're bass fishing or even walleye fishing. I do really like being able to use the foot pedal to control and then just fish. But again, it kind of limits you in what you're able to do. The second thing that I kind of run it that way a lot, and I ran it last summer, is just having it by your console or if you're running a tiller, even back by you in the back. And that is nice for a variety of reasons. One of the reasons is that it's very easy to scout. So like I said, you're able to drop it down, your transducer into the water, you're able to move around, try to find fish on these different pieces of structure, whatever you're looking at. And if they're not there, pick it up and you're moving very quickly. Without having to put down a trolling motor, you can stay right where you're at and be able to move around and scout very quickly. Another thing is that when you are spot locked, you're still able to move. So for example, if I'm fishing right here, my trolling motor spot locked and those fish are moving off to my side, I can easily follow those fish where they're going and I can cast over to them without having to take it off of spot lock. Now, one of the cons of this style of fishing is that it's not quite as fishable. Um, you're going to need to use your hand to move that. If you're gonna be moving the transducer to follow fish around, um, you're not gonna be up front in the bow of your boat. So you might spook a few more fish because you're not up there a little bit closer. You're not able to maybe cast from all different angles. I might be fishing over on this side and then I might see they go over here. So if I'm fishing over on this side now, it's gonna be harder to turn my pole um, with having the foot pedal up front, it's really easy to do that. So you lose a little bit of fish ability, but you gain some of the ability to control it while it's spot locked and also being able to use it when you are scouting. 
third way that I've seen is actually having it on a separate pole mounted up front. So you have your screen up front, you have your pole mount on a separate pole up front. It can be a motorized one. It can be one that you turn manually, whatever it is. Um, and you have, again, some pros and cons with that. Some of the pros are, again, the fishability of it, being able to be up front, kind of cast any direction. Um, and you're also able to use that well. It is spot locked. You're able to still move that around and being able to see where those fish are going. Again, you're gonna run into some of the same issues with other people. If you have other people, you know, you're not maybe gonna be able to show them what, where the fish are, show them what they're looking at. It might be a little harder for that if you have more than one other person. And also again, for scouting, you're not gonna be able to move it down, move it back when you're driving around, looking at different pieces of structure, trying to find fish. So those are three of the main, probably the most popular ways that I see people rigging up their live scope. And ideally you would have them everywhere. You'd have one at your console, you'd have one up front, you'd have one for the person that's in the passenger seat. Maybe people back here in a perfect world, that would be awesome to have that many live scopes. There's actually some guys doing that, but I know that that's not very practical. So I kind of wanted to find a way where I could get all of those benefits um, with one setup. So this, like I said, um, is one of the most versatile, actually probably the most versatile way that I have found for having one live scope, but being able to use it in a lot of different ways. First, one of the decisions that I had to make was if I wanted to keep it on my shuttle or not. If you've been following my channel at all, you know that I've been using the Arc Lab shuttle this winter and I've absolutely loved it. I actually made a whole video talking about that setup. I'm not gonna go too much detail into the shuttle today because I have that separate video. I'll put that in the description below if you're looking for more information on that shuttle specifically and one of the things that I've loved and one of the reasons why I went with this shuttle is one it's the quality is incredible if you've ever looked at any of arc lab stuff if you've been around live scope stuff at all um, you've seen arc lab you know arc lab when I first got some of these products I was just so amazed at how well built they are how sturdy they are so I've really liked the quality of the product but the other thing is that they are always innovating if you've been on Facebook been in any of the Facebook groups um, for live scopes or if you follow Arc Lab on Facebook or Instagram or wherever, you see all kinds of different ideas. Every day, every week, it seems like they are coming out with new ideas to make life easier. A lot of stuff is for the live scope specifically, but they've also created a lot of other things such as tool holders or different pieces for your trolling motor. Um, but it's just really, really cool seeing a company solve so many problems. It seems like anytime that I'm having an issue with something or I'm wondering how I could kind of do something a little bit better, Arc Lab comes up with a product that makes that easier. So those are a couple of reasons why I went with Arc Lab and some of the reasons why I have stuck with them and decided to kind of go this way in my boat. So finally getting to the setup. For the setup, you're gonna need um, a few different things. You're gonna need a track system. So I actually bought a Cisco track and just mounted it to my side. I'll show you that in a second. Um, you're gonna need a Larmac 360. I'll talk about that more. And then you're gonna need your quick dock plate for your shuttle. So I'm gonna kind of talk through each one and show you that. Gonna change some things a little bit, get a little bit better lighting um, on my side over here so that way you can see in a little better detail exactly how we have some of this stuff set up. So like I said, one of the first things that you're gonna need is you are going to need this track system. I went, like I said, with Cisco because that was what was recommended to me and this was super easy to install. All you needed was some bolts with a flat washer on the backside and it mounts nice and sturdy. I mean, this thing is not going to budge. The next thing, which was a huge piece of the puzzle because when I thought about mounting it on the side here, keeping it on my shuttle, the one issue that I saw was not being able to move it at all. And you know, last year I was running it on a ram mount, so I was able to actually turn the screen depending on where I was in the boat. So I was really concerned about not being able to do that and having it only facing one direction when I had it mounted on the side. If I was just gonna do the quick dock plate, which is what I was thinking about doing. Um, so I was trying to figure out how to do that and I actually came across a company called Larmac 360 and they just created the perfect solution for this problem right there. And they actually worked with Arc Lab to um, work together so some of their parts are super compatible. So I'm gonna show you that part right here. So this is the Larmac 360 right here. I'll show you it a little bit closer. Um, I've already attached my quick dock plate. So this top part's actually the quick dock plate from Arc Lab. But what the Larmac 360 is, is this plate and this little cylinder right here. And so essentially what this does is this mounts into the track system like I'll show you in a little bit. It slides right in. And then this part is the part that turns. I'll show you that. You can just turn it, it's just friction turn. You don't need to do anything else. 
super easy, super convenient, but still being very sturdy. So as you can see, there are these two little wings right here that slide right into that track system. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide that in, show you just how easy this is to slide in. So I take it, put it right in there, slide it in, and you're set. Um, all you need to do from here is figure out where you want it. You can move it back and forth. If you have a really long track, you can really move it anywhere. If you have it up front and back, wherever you want, super easy to move. They made it very easy to mount to any track system. And then all you need to do is tighten these little thumb screws down, depending on where you want it. Now that I have that tightened, now it's good to go. I can turn it, I can move it, and I can mount my quick dock plate and my shuttle. So I've already mounted my quick dock shuttle. One of the things I did want to show you like I said, is ArcLab and Larmac 360 actually kind of work together to help develop this product, but literally all you need to do to attach these, to attach the quick dock plate to the Larmac 360 is these four bolts right here. And they're already th pre-threaded, so you just need to drive them right in, tighten them down, and they are set. It really couldn't be easier to attach this quick dock shuttle to the Larmac 360. Now, you're ready to add your live scope shuttle. I've actually, I'm gonna throw in a little clip over here. I've actually put it on my Otter Monster Box. I put one inside, one on the outside. I'm gonna do a full run through on my sled um, next winter. But these have been super, super convenient. Any place that you wanna mount these, you just buy these quick dock plates and you are set. It is gonna be super, super sturdy and it's really easy to take on and off. Now that we have the quick dock plate mounted, now it's gonna be really easy to grab your Arc Lab shuttle set it right in there this is the link fasteners if you're familiar with those so you just grab these wings turn them right in and now it's locked in and it's going nowhere so this is the really cool part um, i was a little concerned not sure it was seemed a little stiff to move right away but once you get these on here you have a little more leverage it is super easy to turn all around so that's that larmac 360 piece that turns it um, so if I'm fishing back here, I can turn it, I can see, I can show, I was just fishing this weekend up on the Rainy River with my nephews, with my dad, and depending on where people were standing in the boat, I was able to turn it very easily. Um, one of the things I was a little bit concerned with was now that I got it on, I thought, is it gonna be too easy where it's gonna turn when I don't want it to? But it seems to be dialed into perfection where I didn't have it turn once on me. I fished, have two, fished two days with it now, I didn't have it turn once on me when I didn't want it to. It was able to be just dirty enough where it won't turn when I don't want it, but if I want to, it's not a stressor to be able to turn it. I'm gonna show you how the pole system works here. Um, again, this is by Arc Lab as well. This was one of the big selling points on, actually on why I bought this, why I bought the shuttle, why I bought everything, was this mount setup for the boat. You know, I looked all around for different live scope mounting solutions. Some of them seem to be able to move too much so you couldn't troll with them. Some of them just seem too bulky. There's a lot of them that are very, very sturdy, but they're super bulky, they're harder to move. When you pull them up, they're sticking out all over the place and I really didn't like that setup. I wanted something that I could move up and down very easily, but still be sturdy when I'm fishing. So um, I came across, again, some of this Arc Lab stuff, which also sold me on their shuttles, but this boat mount system seemed to seal the deal. And they actually have it made for pretty much any boat, any setup that you have. This one mounts perfectly into the Sport Track system by Lund, so I can mount it onto there. I can move it wherever I want within that. Don't have to drill any holes, don't have to worry about that. And it is super solid. So again, I have one up front. I can move it onto the other sides. I can move this wherever I want. I can take it on and off very easily, no holes drilled. And I'm gonna show you how this works. So essentially, they have this ball mount right here. So it has the ram mount, so that's what makes it easy to um, go up and down. But what they did is they figured out a way to be able to have two different points of contact to make it more and more sturdy. So I'm gonna get this pole in here and kind of show you um, how this piece works. Because again, this is one of the big reasons that sold me on this LiveScope pole. This is also the same pole that I use in the winter. All you need to change out is this little coupler right here. Um, goes from the legs to this piece for the boat. Super, super easy. Arc Lab also has a mount right here, as you can see, that locks it into place. So I can turn this, 
push that in and now it locks it into place solid. So when I'm traveling, when I'm doing anything like that, it is rock solid. I can tighten that mount down as much or as little as I want, depending on how quickly I want it to get back out. So again, that's kind of how I have it set when I'm traveling, it's super sturdy, doesn't move when I'm hitting waves or anything like that, keeps the transducer lifted up and off and away from everything. And so then when I'm fishing, I'll show you exactly what that looks like. So essentially what'll happen is I'll be driving around, looking around, when I get to a piece of structure that I wanna fish, I'll stop, I'll take this out. I will not have a corner of my wall sitting right there, so I won't have to hit it. And a lot of times what I do is I kind of set it in there like this, and then I can just pull and clip. Now it's into place, I can move around. Depending on how fast I'm gonna be going is how fast I will tighten it. Honestly, a lot of times I don't even tighten it down very hard, and it stays plenty sturdy. If I know I'm gonna be trolling, I'll make sure it's level, I'll make sure it's perpendicular, and then I will tighten it down pretty good. I found that when I tighten this ramp mount down good, that thing is getting me five plus miles an hour. You know, for sure that four to five range, and if I really want to, I could get five plus if I tighten it down very hard. And actually, Arc Lab just came out with a, another piece. Um, again, talking about some of all the always innovating. It actually is a piece that kind of goes around for people that want to troll much faster. Um, it's gonna make it rock solid. So easy to do that if I'm driving around, I'm scanning, if I don't see fish, all I need to do, loosen it up, pull it out. Again, corner of the wall is right there that I don't wanna hit. A lot of times I'll just set it there. I can clamp it down into place when I wanna make sure, but a lot of times I'll just set it there, drive to the next spot, take it out, do the same thing, make sure my ram mount is set, slide it into place, and I'm fishing. Again, sometimes I wanna make sure it's a little more perpendicular or not, but very easy to be fishing in a short amount of time. Um, just driving around, a lot of times I'll just drive around and scout like this, move around, then I can fish very easily. So again, I'll give you a quick rundown of some of the components of this part. Um, you have the plate that comes with for the sport track or literally pretty much any boat that is out there, they have a piece made for. If not, they can make one for you. You have your ram mount that hooks into there. So you have two points of contact that make it super, super sturdy. Super easy mount, ram mount. Um, the collar that attaches onto the pole this is the same pole I use for the ice. Um, I can't remember exactly what the name of this pole is, but this is the Pro Series pole. And this piece right here is basically you just, again, attach that to the sport track and it locks the pole right in place, nice and sturdy. So now let's talk one of the other features and actually one of the other solutions of one of the problems that I have. So this right here solved the problem of the pole not being sturdy. I was still able to mount right here, still able to move it back and forth when I need. Um, pole is much sturdier. I'm getting, like I said, five miles an hour, which I don't go above five miles an hour very often. So that's pretty much all I've needed. Um, but I was not able to move it up to the front of the boat. When I added here, I had my battery and my black box sitting down here and I, I was stuck right here. Sometimes I would want to fish up front, um, but I just simply couldn't. Now with this same system, I can easily move it up to the front and I'll show you exactly how you can do that right here. All you need is either another track system. If you have another track system up front, you can do that and then you can just slide the whole track system out if you want the Larmac 360 piece so you can turn it, which is actually what I think I'm going to do um, here shortly. Or if you have another quick dock plate, all you need to do is mount the quick dock plate. That's what I have right now. So I'm gonna show you that. Um, I'm gonna get some camera switch around so you can kind of see where that's at, see where I'm at and how easy it is to transition it from the back of the boat to the front of the boat. So I'm gonna get stuff reconfigured here and I will show you that in a second. So now that I've got that part set, I'm gonna show you how easy it is for me to move it up to the front of my boat. I had to add a few more lights here so it's gonna be a little bit bright on this camera. Um, but I'll get up there here. All I need to do, again, take the ram mount off, loosen that up, take it off of this pole holder. Once the ram mount is loose, I take that piece with me. If you can see that, take this piece right here um, with me. I undo the link attachments on my LiveScope shuttle, pull it right off, shuttle, everything comes off. Then I can carry it up to the front. Once I'm up to the front, set it right in. I have a quick dock plate mounted right here. Set it right in again. All you need to do, lock those in. Now it's rock solid again. Now I can fish from here, 
take that. I might have to add a little more cord here. We'll see. I can mount onto this ram mount. I'll be fishing in just a couple minutes from changing again. Slide it right in, lock it into place. Once it's locked into place, tighten it down. Now, what I can do is I can fish from up front. I can have my live scope screen right here. I can be easily moving this back and forth. I need to tighten that down a little bit more. There, now super sturdy. I can easily watch my screen fish, fish from up here and have everything um, in the same exact setup that I did before. So there, I could easily fish up here. When I'm done fishing up here, I unclip. Once I loosen that up, take it all back, lock it in, oops, lock it in, and I am again fishing right back here. So you can see how easy it is to move it from the front to the back. You can see how easy it is to travel. You can do a lot of different things with this. All right, so let's real quick talk some pros and cons to wrap this up. Really, the main con that I can think of with this setup, obviously a one live scope setup. I'm not talking about having multiple live scopes. Obviously that would be awesome. But for a one live scope setup, really the main con that I can think of is it's not quite as clean. When I was running with just my RAM mount, obviously all I had was just my screen. Didn't have anything else. Everything else was tucked under and underneath there. So it looked a little bit more clean, which is something that I did like, but if you know me at all, you know that I'm way more of a practical person as opposed to a looks person. And the other thing that I was a little concerned about right away um, was having the black box kind of out in the open and having the battery. It was before that was all kind of tucked underneath and behind. But the more research I did, I found out that these black boxes are way more waterproof than I ever anticipated. So getting some water splashed up on there is not going to be a big deal at all. Getting rained on, not going to have any issues. These can actually be submerged for, I think, 24 hours or so is what the rating is for. So if you're concerned about that, seeing the black box on the back, I ran it all ice season. I've had it out in the rain. I've had it out getting wet. These things are much more durable than we think. And the battery is underneath and that's all still um, in a nice solid container with the shuttle of the Arc Lab. So really those are a few of the cons um, that I could come up with when I was kind of weighing out if I should do this was just really the look of it. And not that it's a bad look by any means, because really with all of that marine grade aluminum, um, it's actually a really kind of nice aesthetic for the shuttle purposes, but it's gonna take up a little more space. You know, you're gonna have some of that stuff underneath as opposed to just a ram mount. Now, when we're talking pros, there is a lot of pros to the system. Um, a few of these, which I've already covered, but I'll touch on them again real quick. The first one is how easy it is to transport. One, I can move it from ice fishing to my boat. I can move it from my boat to a buddy's boat. I can move from back to up front, or if I'm going to a little hiking lake, I can move it to a smaller boat. It's just so easy to take on, take off. If I'm gonna be fishing someplace and I'm worried about it getting taken, I can take it off. Don't have to worry about unhooking anything and it's all gonna be with me and I can keep it safe. So being able to be easily transported is obviously one of the biggest pros. Another pro is a much, much sturdier pole. Again, um, as opposed to my last video, this pole I have found to be much more sturdy, uh, much more heavy duty, which has been very nice. So we have easy to move, we have a very much sturdier pole. Another pro is that you can move it to kind of see anywhere in the boat and Again, that's that Lar Mac 360, being able to move it, turn it kind of wherever. I am planning on getting a rail system actually mounted up front as well, so I can slide it in up there and I can turn it and move it up there as well. Another thing that's super nice is the ability to actually have its own power source. I love being able to keep my amped outdoors uh, 48 amp hour lithium battery in there. Um, in my last live scope video, in the shuttle video, that thing, I talked a lot about it. It is an absolute powerhouse. It fits inside the shuttle, but I never have to worry about power. I'm always you filming with multiple cameras. And so, for example, when I'm filming in the summertime, I can keep it here and I can keep my 
cameras plugged into the USBs, keep my phone charging, whatever I want, be able to have that auxiliary power right there. Um, and also being able to have it so it doesn't interfere with any of the other electronics power, um, anything like that, or drawing on my cranking battery. Being able to have it on its own power source is very, very nice as well. And the last one, one of the most obvious ones is, this is an incredibly versatile unit because it can be used for multi-season. Like I said, I was just out last week, I was going ice fishing and then moving into the boat, able to keep all the shuttle, the pole, just a minor switch on the pole, and I was out in the boat, um, easy moving from one to the next. So a lot of us, if you have the Arc Lab system, which is a lot of people do, a lot of people have this shuttle, it's an easy way to mount it onto your boat. So I get honestly a lot of questions, um, DMs on Instagram, on YouTube, a lot of comments asking about how I have it set up for my boat. Um, one thing that I've noticed, I've been getting a lot of comments on my video from last year recently, asking a lot of questions. So I wanted to get this one done quickly to answer as many questions as possible, because obviously this is a hot topic. A lot of people have bought it for ice fishing. They have the shuttles and they're wondering how do they hook it up? If you don't have it for ice fishing and you want to use it or just being able to use it, keep it in the shuttle is something that's very, very convenient and I highly recommend. If you're just using it for a boat, it's not a big deal to have the shuttle, you can hardwire it in. But I tell you what, being able to move it from the front to the back and just have one unit, that is worth its weight in gold right there. So there we have it. I just threw a ton of information at you, probably missed some stuff, probably talking 100 miles an hour, but I wanted to kind of share with you this new system that I'm really, really excited about. Um, if you do have any questions, please let me know. I very easily could have missed something. Please throw those in the comments below. Reach out to me, I would love to help. Love to answer any questions about this setup, um, about some of the things that, what I'm running, how I'm running it, and again, if you have any questions on any of the specifics, I'll put all these links in the description below. So I'll put the live scope shuttle, I'll put the boat mount for the pole, I'll put the pole, the Larmac 360, the track mount, everything that you will need, um, I will put in the links in the description here below. Um, but again, don't hesitate to reach out with questions if there's anything that I forgot. So yeah, that's the setup. Hope you guys have found this informational. Hope this gives you a little clarity as you're trying to figure out how you wanna rig up your boat. Just gives you a few more options, shows you what I do, but also talks through a few more options that are out there. Again, always reach out with any questions. As always, I appreciate the support and we'll see you next time.